Well, as winter is now approaching, so is the end of the season, but we still have a few Milsim events left this year. If you're attending your first Milsim in the upcoming months, I'm here to help you prep. So first off, I want to go over a few colors. Keep in mind that headwear does matter when you're picking out your uniform. So if you're picking green or tan team, make sure that your helmet or cover, your hat, matches your uniform colors. Your gear does not matter, so if you wear a different color, plate carrier, knee pads, elbow pads, pouches, boots, gloves, slings, chamogs, all those accessories are great to have, but do not get factored in to your camo pattern. So, if you're running traditional green, you want to wear something similar to the tones of this M81 vest. Black, brown, uh, and green is mixed in with this vest here, but you want to keep your tones favoring the green, just like my battle shirt here green underneath. That way your enemies are easily identified. Versus if you're going with the tan colors. Here you're going to get a lot of light tans and browns. You can also run ATAX or um, civilian like clothing. Uh, if you're going to an event like Jet Desert Fox or perhaps an event here at ACS, we allow blue jeans and gray sweatpants on the tan team. You can also wear any blue shirt. And then on the green and black team, we'll allow you to wear red and black so you can wear black sweatpants with a red flannel or something along those lines. In addition I'd like to show you my eye protection. I use these Zulu goggles from Valken. These are thermal. They help prevent fog. So one of the most important things while you're in the field is being able to see. Whether it's to get on the field, off the field, or shooting at your opponent, you have to see where you're going. You have to know what you're doing with your kit, with your team, and not lose track of things. Find yourself a solution for fog, whether it's buying a new pair of goggles or bringing in some anti-fog solutions such as um, fog wipes or even the X-Fog system. Um, these are great ways to help prevent fog. The X-Fog way it works was is it'll attach to the back of your helmet via Velcro and it comes with tubes that will go insert of, of your goggles and help push air in and eliminate fog throughout the day. So you do have some remedies there if that is an issue you're facing. You also want to make sure you pack enough BBs. We're all here to play one thing, and that's airsoft. The only way you can do so is with a good bottle of BBs. I prefer Elite Force .32s. 2.8s do great as well. Definitely pack enough of these. The last thing you want to do is ruin your immersion by having to walk off the field, purchase more stuff, and then go back onto the field. Fuel. Whether you're using a pistol, grenade launcher, HPA, you're going to need CO2 or green gas, as well as compressed air. Have a way of refilling at your fog. So if you're using green gas, bring an extra canister, CO2, don't forget your cartridges, and compressed air if you have the option to have a second tank, that'll be greatly beneficial to you throughout the day as opposed to walking on and off the field to refuel. Kill rag or kill light. I use a red blinking light to indicate red you're dead and then for my opponents who stop shooting at me. Having this will be great if you're playing CQB or indoors in old factories where lighting is very low and you need the enemy to stop shooting your way as you are dead and waiting for a medic or to walk back to spawn. Snacks and hydration. Obviously you want to drink lots of water weeks prior to the event. You do not hydrate by just drinking water at supper the night before. You also want to bring snacks with you. Granola bars, uh, peanuts are great, um, uh, if you have MREs that are not my preferred, uh, Slim Jims, any sort of like protein to help you stay fueled throughout the, the long game day. Typically, Milsim events do not take lunch breaks, so you are responsible for uh, your nutrition throughout the day. Mags. Get yourself some good mags. Typically, you can only carry six 120 round mid caps onto the field. I carry three in the front, one in the gun, and then two in my side pouch. You can run them in any configuration that you're comfortable with. But make sure that you've tested these days prior. Make sure that they feed with your gun great. You don't have any jamming issues, any loading issues, and that you're ready to fight when you get out there. Once you have a good set of mags picked out for the event, you're going to want to get yourself a nice speed loader. You don't want to be out there with the little foam crunchers, trying to borrow someone else's. Get yourselves either the Odin, the True Innovation one, or the Balkan clone, where you can sidewind. These will click right in. They're super convenient. They click in just like a magazine. The wheel's on the side. You crank the wheel until it's full. The clutch will kick in, indicating, hey, this is no longer accepting BBs. The mag's ready to play. Hit the mag release button, it drops, and you're good to go back out on the field. You can now load a magazine in five seconds versus, you know, three or four BBs at a time, taking up a whole minute. The longer you're in the field, the more valuable you are to your team. Get yourselves a nice speed loader. Batteries, 
If you run an AEG, you don't want to forget these. You're going to have a bad time if you do. I like to run Titan Power. These are the Lie Ions. They charge just like a LiPo, but they last so much longer. This is 3,000 milliamps. Plug this into my battery. I can play three days on it without a problem. One year warranty. If you're looking for a new battery, looking for a new upgrade, get yourselves a Lie Ion battery. Pyro. So you can run the Enola Gay EG18 Smokes. I run two taggins in the front. I'm always ready with the AFGs. These are great. They fit my pouches. You can also run Enola Gay EG67s, Flash 3.0s. If other tagging familiar products, the FBGs, the Tag 67s, the Tag 19s, or any of the M203 launchables as well. Um, but having these is a great way to clear rooms, clear buildings, get people out of behind bunkers or obstacles, and allow your team to push forward on the field. Comms. If you're going out with a squad, you have teammates, you need to be in contact with command staff, or even maybe in the case of an emergency if you're not carrying your cell phone, having your radio on standby is going to be great. Being able to communicate, hey, I'm way out on the flank, I found an objective, uh, someone's hurt, we need an admin, whatever the case may be, this is going to be there for you to relay that message. Another item you'd like to have other than a radio is going to be your identification card. Having things on here that's going to list best contact information in case of emergency, next to kin, information, telephone, um, any known medical condition so that in the case of an emergency someone gets to you, they know what they're looking for and know how to address you the best. You're going to want tools. Tools are going to be great if you have an issue in the field, you need to adjust motor height, um, a motor terminal pops off, connectors go bad, maybe you need to change a bucking in the field. Things that are going to keep you from making that pesky walk all the way back to your car, grabbing your wallet, going into a store, going up to a vendor trailer, having to get all this stuff, get tech help. Just do it in the field. There are going to be plenty of people around if you don't know how to change a bucking. There are plenty of YouTube videos to help you do so. But doing these minor little things in the field or prior to the event, more specifically, are going to help you play and have a longer and more fun time while you're out in the field. Another thing you'd like to add is ace bandages. Put these in a place that your medic can get to them reasonably. These need to be four feet in length. Um, typically, I don't like these elastic ones that stick together. But for demonstration purposes, four feet is going to help. The medic's going to come up. He's going to bandage you. And the four feet helps create time, especially under pressure when you're getting shot at. And that once they're banded and done correctly, now you can go back out and continue playing. But your medic's going to be under stress. He's going to get shot at, you're going to get shot at, and it's going to take him a moment to get that wrapped up for you. And so keep these accessible and keep them manageable. So try not to get the sticky ones where they ball up and they're totally garbage after the first use. Get something that's going to last throughout the day. That way your medic comes in, he can get you back in the game quickly and reasonably and get you back on the field. A uh, good flashlight if you're going to be playing night games. Otherwise, uh, night vision is a great bonus or thermal if you have those at your disposal. And then if it's looking like forecast for rain, you definitely want to try to bring a poncho. Now, I don't like to spend a lot of money in rain gear. A uh, generic poncho will do just fine to get you through the day. A uh, poncho is just a great way to hold in body heat and make you sweat. So you're going to be wet regardless of the case. And if it really pours down, a poncho is not going to do you a lot of good. So don't worry about that too much. You really want to focus on bringing extra socks, good footwear to get you throughout the day, especially when you're going to be playing for 10 or 12 hours, morning to dinner or beyond. So just be prepared to stay out there long term. Don't forget any of these key essentials. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out.